Okay, one of the last things we want to cover is how we can reduce your toxic load. Now, this could be a really in-depth conversation, but for this level, what we want to do is really keep it to the simplest things that we can. So if you go back to your blueprint, when we were talking about chemical stress, we were talking about two things that can create chemical stress in your body. So whether you're deficient in something or you're toxic in something. And we talked about before how even certain vitamins could be if you had too little of something that could be a stress load or too much of something that could be a stress load as well. But when I think about chemical stressors, often what we think about are the, the easiest things that you could do in your day to day that would have an effect on your toxic load. Um, so thinking about, for example, foods. So when we think about foods that have different types of chemicals and pesticides on them, there are there's an environmental working group that's basically come out with a dirty dozen or a clean 15. So these are the foods that the dirty dozen are, as an example, are the foods that contain the highest amount of pesticide residue. So what we know for 2020 is that those top three were strawberries, spinach, and kale. So we said it in other videos that we said, look, if you're going to eat berries, make sure they're, or organic. If you're going to eat strawberries, make sure they're organic because it's multiple years in a row that strawberries have been number one on the pesticide list. So again, if you're going to eat berries and you're going to eat strawberries, make sure they're organic. So we'll give you a link to that environmental working group. The list changes every year, but in general, I've been watching it the last five years or so, and it seems to be quite consistent. So things that are high on the list, you want to really make sure you're reducing or choosing organic versions. So some people would say, oh, it doesn't matter if you buy organic um, or not. Well, for these foods, I think it really does matter. So making sure anything that's leafy, that because the pesticide residue can stay on the leafy stuff, making sure you're choosing organic. So like your spinach, your kale, your lettuce, things like that, we try and choose organic as much as we can. So reducing your toxic load from food, if you think about anything that has a peel, so something like a banana or an orange or an avocado, something like that, they tend to be on the clean list because you can take off the peeling and then you can um, eat what's inside and so it's usually protected. So pesticides are probably one of the uh, easiest and fastest ways that you can reduce your toxic load. So we try and eat organic as much as possible, but we use that environmental working groups list that we'll link to so that you can make decisions about, okay, do I really need to buy organic, um, uh, say cauliflower and broccoli versus organic kale? So buy organic as much as you can, but if you had to make a choice between those three things, we would say, well, definitely buy organic kale um, and the broccoli and cauliflower, they're going to be on the clean list because of just the way the, the hard outer shell, they, they don't have as much residue. So try and reduce your pesticide um, exposure as much as possible. The second thing would be this area of personal care products. So I'm, I don't use a lot as a guy. I know as uh, I looked at some of the stuff my wife has, and I know this could be a long list, so I'm just going to keep this to a few things. Because when I say skin products, it's basically like anything you put on your skin, whether it's soaps or lotions or creams, those types of things, it gets absorbed into your body. So you really want to be careful about the things that you're putting on your skin because they get absorbed. Also things like sunscreen. So we always recommend people use mineral-based sunscreens, things that have things like um, titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, those types of things. They tend to do a really good job blocking out the sun, but they're not harmful for your skin. So you want to make really good choices for anything that you're putting on your skin and especially things like deodorant because commercial deodorants have things like aluminum. So you don't want to add any, you know, heavy metal exposure to your body that's unnecessary when there's a safe alternative product that works really well. So typically any of our skincare products we typically just get from a health food store or from the organic section in a grocery store. So you can just check the label and usually the things that are there are going to have less of a load than other commercialized products. So really be careful what you're putting on your skin because it does get absorbed. And the third easy way I would just be really cautious about the water that you consume. So there's 
a couple, like we have a filtering product at home that right from the source, it gets out, it's a charcoal system that gets out all the chlorine. So if we don't have chlorine in our showers or if you run our taps, there's very little that comes through because right from the source into our house, we actually put a filter system there. Now, the other thing I would recommend is using uh, for your drinking water, something like a reverse osmosis system. So reverse osmosis gets out a lot of chemicals, things like chlorine, but it also gets out things like fluoride. So, you know, we really want to be cautious about how much we're consuming things like chlorine because the goal of chlorine is to keep the water clean, which is great. The downside is that when you're drinking chlorine, it actually affects your gut microbiome. So we really want to be careful about how much of that we consume. We are also really cautious about how much plastic we consume. So, you know, we try not to drink a lot of bottled water. If it is bottled, we try and use glass and try and recycle, you know, the glass as much as possible. We try and really reduce the amount of load that we're putting on the environment as well. So water, like we do have different types of filtration systems. A reverse osmosis system for drinking water is not expensive. Uh, I think you can get one for $300 or something like that. So it's a good investment. It gets out a lot of the things that um, you don't need in your water and it keeps the chlorine content down, it keeps the fluoride content down. So these would be the basic things. You really, again, when you're grocery shopping, uh, once you have that list, you're kind of aware of it. You want to make sure that you're using that as you're making your choices, choosing organic as much as you can, being careful with your personal care products, and trying to drink the cleanest water that you can.